I have two daughters and they are learning both learning a musical instrument, my youngest one on the piano, my older one on the violin. And I say to them, right, come on, time for your music practice. Go, ah, ah, ah. Translation, no, I don't want to do it. Now, there are several reasons why kids don't really like practicing things like scales or doing their music practice. It's a solitary activity. Uh, and it's also, you know, it doesn't really involve uh, anything apart from their musical instrument. However, if you start involving things like Garage band or digi other digital forms of accompaniment and, and help, you can actually start to get into what you're doing. Now, I've got here the ABRSM Grade 5 piano pieces for 2019 to 20, and the third one in is a well, a nice little late Baroque piece called Minuetto by J.B. Louis, Louis A. And it goes something like this. <laughs> So it's very clever, two lines only, and it's all conveying the harmony and the rhythm very nicely indeed. Great. Now, my left hand wasn't as even as my right hand there. How am I going to sort that out? Well, back in the day, we would have used a metronome, something like this. back in the day of analogue metronomes, the ones that do this, the clockwork would invariably wear out after six months and you wouldn't actually be getting, getting gaining any benefit at all because it would go... So essentially you were practicing against something that was leading you down the wrong path. However, you can use garage band as well. Now I've got a percussion loop set up. I just uh, made that up before starting this film where I've just got things like cabasas and shakers and congas and that sort of thing to accompany me on this. Now, if I select that same tempo of 100 that I just um, used on the metronome, I get something like this. Now, what we don't want to happen is that we start playing this piece with the wrong inflections because of the percussion. However, the percussion gives you actually some 30-second note, some demi-semi quaver um, sort of delineations, which means that you can really work with these semi quavers on them to get them even. Now, if I just play the right hand on its own, one, two, three. brought that mordant in slightly before the bar line there. But the point is, if I just go on to a lengthy set of semi quavers here. Two, three. So I'm playing a Baroque piece against a modern percussion loop. Music is music is music. We should always remember that. Learning the right hand here is no different in approach from learning the guitar solo from Jeff Beck's Space Boogie. It's no difference at all. It involves the same sort of care and the same attention to detail. Now what we also don't want to happen is that we are taking this, which is essentially, this is digital information. And what a human being would do with this is to make it analogue, is to take this and make a vinyl version of it, if you will. Something that just has some inflections and some, some thought and some humanity, really. So if you listen to versions of this on YouTube, and that's a really good idea as well, go on YouTube and have a listen to things like this. I've got a, a student who is currently, he's just done his grade six piano, and he... Um, he, he just, without being told, goes and listens to all these versions and he says, oh yes, I, I like this version the best and then plays it like that. And you think, if only everyone would do that. We are so blessed with a resource like YouTube and things like audio files and CDs, and old hat I know, but to be able to listen to a version of this and think, oh, I quite like that. I'm not so sure about that one, but I'm going to play it like this. What a great 
sort of uh, way of approaching it. Now the percussion, if I slow this right down, the problem with a metronome is that when you slow the tempo down, there is a bigger gap between those beats. So it's harder to actually fully get those things like semiquavers over, you know, of course, it's good for your timing instinct to do that, but when you're still learning to get these semiquavers even, we could do something like slowing it down to 68, for example, which is basically half the tempo that it says here, 138, so whatever, half of that, 69, yeah, 68, slightly below halfway. So I'm going to play that again, and then I'm going to try that same semiquaver section. And that's it. Now you can, uh, with GarageBand, you can set the complexity of the percussion. It's kind of in the middle, the joystick's in the middle, so it's neither loud nor soft, it's sort of in the middle, and it's neither simple nor complex, it's in the middle. So you can actually make it more complicated if you are at a slower tempo. Let's try that. slightly more going on there now and it just gives you a hold over the tiny little micro bits of this. Now as I said just now when you listen to a version of this that's you know professionally recorded for example that there will be tempo variations you're not you've got these phrases here and it would be a bit like if you played it absolutely as it is there with no inflections at all it would be like this, so you've got phrase one and then it comes to an end and then phrase two follows straight afterwards and then phrase three and then at the end you've got phrase four and then together they make four... Fr no, you have phrase one, then you have phrase two, then three and then four and it wraps it up into a nice neat little bundle. That's kind of what we want. <laughs> Now, of course, back in the day, in 1723, when this was written, nearly 300 years ago, we didn't have instruments like this that were capable of these different volume levels. And in fact, the, all the dynamics that are marked here are editorial suggestions. The reason being is that dynamics is, and shape is one of the criteria that this is, you know, that, that is essentially part of the examination process. So it's got forte here. So it's loud for the first page, then it goes uh, piano for six bars, then forte for a couple of bars, then you've got an echo, piano. That's kind of, that's all that's been given. So the rest of it is up to you, and that's what makes this actually quite fun to do, is that you've got lots and lots of different ways of approaching this. We are human, we're all, obviously, we are all different in terms of how we interpret a piece of music, and that's really important to, to really nail that. The percussion on the phone, don't let it put you off. There's also no firm three time there. If I'm just uh, playing this back from the beginning, what we could do is to put a one, two, three using and acoustic drums, for acoustic drums, for example. So um, I could, uh, instead of um, having my, uh, I'm just going to get rid of that. Delete. I want a drum kit, acoustic drums. So my first beat is going to be a ride cymbal, and then two hi hats. I'm doing this through a Bluetooth system, so there's a bit of a delay here. But what I can do is I can record that, quantize it up, and then it will feel more like a three time. Okay, 
So actually, I, did, I divided the third beat into two quavers. Now that third beat, the reason I did that, the reason I put two things in the third beat is to sort of lead back on to beat one. So if I just go and uh, quantize that to quarter note, I get this. Nope. Except my open hi-hat was obviously... Uh... So I need to put... Um... Ah, I quantized it to eighth notes. That's where I went wrong. So actually I can undo that. I can go into the settings, uh, track controls rather, and actually quantize to eighth notes. I should have done that. Okay. And there's my open hi-hat there. Now that could be quite loud. We don't want to play this like we're jazzers and to have, you know, sort of uh, backbeat stronger. That's one thing we don't want to fall into the trap of here. So I'm just going to edit this and just make that hi-hat, that open hi-hat, much, much lower in volume. So it's really just subtle. And then I'm going to loop it. There we go. So. So we are now making something of this piece at all the half the tempo. No longer is it the uh, 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 and you know you're not losing the will to, to live with this. You're actually thinking, oh I can I can do this. And then you gradually ramp the tempo up and you you get all those inflections and all that thought process about how you're going to play it when it's at full speed. It says circa 138 as well, so actually it's kind of round there anyway. It's, yeah, it gives you a little bit of freedom over the tempo and also remember that phrasing. So there we go. There's a way of practicing a piece of music 300, year old, 300 years old with a phone that's three months old.